So welcome back to the video on how to create a request definition. Um, and in this video, we're going to cover the approval process. So in our previous video, we created the service request, we created the tasks, uh, we tested it, everything seems to work fine, uh, but we did not turn on the approval process. So now we're going to create an approval process following the requirements that were sent to us by the provisioning manager. So the first thing you'll do is you'll log into Remedy Force. You go to Remedy Force Administration, and you'll go down to the Manage Workflow and Other Processes, and you'll select Approval Process. This will kick you out of the Remedy Force Administration tab and bring you to Salesforce's Approval Process. The first thing you need to make sure once you get here is to select the proper object. Uh, this approval, although it's for a service request, we know that the service request shares the incident object. Uh, so make sure that the uh, approval process for is set to incident and we're going to go ahead and select the create new approval we're going to select the standard setup wizard and we're going to call this process uh, standard software hardware request uh, there may be a different one for the uh, executive like we we talked about earlier so we'll make sure that we have the keyword here of standard in front and we're going to add a quick description we're going to click next. So this is where we're going to add the, the criteria that's going to qualify this um, particular approval process uh, with a record of some sort. What we're going to leverage is the actual title, the service request title. So we're going to select the service request title. And the value here will need to be the exact name of the title. And I just went over it and copied it. And basically, it has to have the one dot space and the proper um, syntax of the title. All right, we'll hit next. All right, in this step, we will leave it like this by default. We're just going to click next. The approval assignment email template. Now, in your environment you may already have an approval template uh, in this case I already do so I'm going to go ahead and select it and I'm going to just type the word approve and I'm going to use the incident approval required email template and hit next over here we'll leave the top part uh, as is and we are going to add a checkbox in display approval history information uh, section here and we'll click next. So this section, we'll leave everything as is. We'll just hit save. And we're going to fine tune the approval process and the following screens. So here, um, we're not going to leave it here. We don't want to do the steps just yet. Let's uh, let's just go to uh, back to the beginning. Uh, we can see what, what our approval looks like so far. All right, so let's review what we have. Um, the name, obviously, a quick description. The criteria is if the service request title equals, and here's the name of the request uh, definition. The initial submitter, the ticket owner at the time. Um, the approval template, we have the email template set up. Uh, it's not active yet, which is fine. We don't want to activate it just yet. Uh, we are not allowing submitters to recall, so this is by choice. Now we're going to take a look and see what, what happens. So once it's submitted, uh, the record will be locked. So nobody can edit the record, which is what we want. So we know from our document that there's going to be a two-step process. The manager is the first approval, and then it's going to go to the provisioning queue for the second approval. So let's go ahead and add the first step. So let's call this one step one. And this will be uh, manager approval. We'll hit next. So basically, yes, the, the, we want all records to enter this step. So we'll leave it like this. Um, and we're going to click on next. Now over here, this is where we're going to define the manager. So we don't want to let the submitter choose. Um, and we don't want to automatically assign to a queue. In this case, we want to automatically assign to an approver. So we're going to select here um, the related user. So whoever whoever the user is going to be on you know when you submit the request the related user and we're going to select the client manager 
So you know, although I may be submitting the request, but I'm submitting it in Bobby's name, well, we want Bobby's manager to approve it, not my manager. And we're going to leave this as uh, the first option, approve or reject based on the first response. We're going to hit save. So at this point, you can add a couple of actions. Uh, once the manager approves it, you know, what do you want to happen? Um, you could send an email alert to the client, let them know that the manager approved it. Uh, or you can do a field update or anything else. Um, but for now, we're going to click on no and we're going to click go. This will bring us back to the initial page here. So we've created the first step and we're going to do a second step. And here we're going to call it uh, step two. And the description it will be the provisioning approval. We're going to click next. So at this point, all records that went through the first step and got approved will fall into this step. So we'll leave this option like this. We'll hit next. And here we're going to want to update uh, the queue. So we're going to automatically assign this to the provisioning queue. And for the re rejection behavior, we're going to leave this like this for now. We're going to save this. So here we're going to do a couple of field updates. So we'll leave this as yes, and we're going to do a field update. You click go. So the first field update is going to be called approved checkbox. And the field to update is the approved checkbox. Now this field update is probably one of the most important field updates you'll do in your approval process when it comes to service requests that have tasks tied to them. By updating this checkbox to true, it basically tells the service request that it can go ahead and generate the tasks. All right, our next approval action will be another field update. And this one will be called um, assign the ticket to the provisioning queue. All right. And the field to update will be the owner. And we're going to update the queue to provisioning. And we're going to save this. And finally, one more uh, field update. And this will be to update the status field to approved. Now, you'll figure this out as you start doing approval processes that you can't really update the status field. You'll see it's not on the list here. So the way to uh, update the status field is to apply a template. Now I happen to have it, an incident template. Uh, the only field that's on there is the status field and it has the value of approved. I'm going to select the template name and I'm going to use the formula and give it the value in quotations of the name of the template, the incident template, which is called update status to approved. I'm going to save this. All right, so now we have the three field updates and the record unlocked. That's for the, that's for the approval. Now for the rejection, uh, the record uh, is unlocked as well. And we're going to add another field update. And this one is going to be called update the status to reject it. So I'm going to apply a template again. And the formula, the template name, in quotations, update status to reject it. So let's save this. All right, so I think we're done. So let's review. Um, we have for the approval steps, the first step is a manager approval, and that's related to the client manager. Then the second step is the provisioning approval, and that will be sent to the provisioning queue. So basically anyone that works that queue will be able to approve the request. So now let's review the approval actions. Once it's a, once the record is approved, the record is unlocked. Uh, it's assigned to the provisioning queue. The status is changed to up, uh, approved and the approved checkbox is checked. And for rejection, we have the records unlocked. So we're going to change this to uh, keep the record locked. All right.
right? And the other rejection action is the field update to update the status to rejected. All right, so let's activate our approval process and let's go test it. Now, before we jump into self-service to test it, we need to make sure that we added the checkbox where it says automatically submit for approval on our service request. So we'll save that. And now we can go into self-service to test it. And we're gonna refresh our screen. And let's do Bobby again. Now, in Bobby's case, we know that the approver or his manager um, will be uh, Mike Brady. And then myself, I'm in the uh, provisioning queue, so I'll be able to approve it. So let's uh, select Bobby again. We'll go hardware, CD-ROM 2. Service request 539. So now we'll go to the console and we'll refresh service requests. And here's 539. So let's quickly look at all the fields to make sure nothing's changed. We still have Bobby as the client. Category, impact, urgency, and status is still the same, pending approval, which is based on the template. The queue is still pending approval, so nobody got notified just yet. So let's go to the details. We see the record is locked and there is no task yet, which is fine. And we see it's pending approval for Mike Brady, the uh, it's assigned to Mike Brady, so his manager. So I'm going to approve this. So on a different screen, I have the approval uh, pop up. I'm just going to approve it. And now the ticket will probably auto refresh. And you'll notice that the record is still locked. Uh, Mike Brady did approve it. And now it's assigned to the provisioning queue for their, their approval. There's still no link task, which is fine. The link task should not get created until uh, the provisioning queue approves it. So let's go ahead and approve this one. All right, I just approved it. This should refresh. It did refresh. Uh, provisioning queue approved it. And now we notice that task one uh, has been created. So our approval process works as designed. Now let's go tackle the service level agreement.